on YouTube, my name is Joe Banofsky. I'm a DJ here in Madison, Connecticut. Uh, I run JNS Entertainment, a professional disc jockey service that I started in 1992. Um, the reason I'm telling you this is because those of you who are new to the channel, um, you're about to watch a DIY video. Those of you who have seen my videos in the past know that I do a lot of DIY videos. Um, but my background is not just in DJing. Um, I've been a DJ since high school, um, and it's just something I never gave up. It's a passion of mine. But in 1997, I started working in the production industry, uh, specifically corporate meeting and event production. Um, and I've been doing that as well ever since. Um, that's the name of my other company by design. So there's two sides to my business. There's the corporate side and there's the personal event side. Um, they're branded differently for uh, obvious reasons, but... Um, in that world, I get to play with a lot of big things, trussing, lighting, um, you name it. Um, we do a lot of video production as well. Um, in the DJ world, uh, any of you have seen my setups, and I'm going to show you some examples of those now. I like to keep things very minimal, um, sort of fade into the room, not be ostentatious. Now, I know there are some clients that are looking for that, and there are plenty of DJs out there that provide that. Um, and I can, I have access to all of that same equipment. Um, but for the most part, when it comes to DJing weddings, I like a minimalist setup. I don't like to do totems and flashy this and that. All of my equipment is usually black, draped in black. Uh, you don't see any wires. I'm sure many of you have seen my custom cabling videos. Everything is neat and tucked out of the way. So, um, my main system usually consists of a QSC K181 sub. A sub pole, a set of chevet, uh, spot duo, and uh, spot duos under the speaker, the speaker, and then lately I've been putting a, uh, a wash light on top of the speakers. Um, so everything is in one neat column, no extra stands. One of the things I incredibly dislike is those, those I don't know what you call them, those weird trusses that people stretch across the back and hang a bunch of lights off of them. I'm not into that look. A T-bar, I hate that look. Um, lately, somebody came out with some bar that goes in between the speaker and the speaker pole, and it makes a T-bar over the speaker, so now you have things dangling out on either side of the speaker. While I think that's a great concept, I don't like the way it looks. Um, so I've adapted a way, and I showed it in a former video, to connect essentially an extension speaker pole smack in the center of most speakers that have a handle on top. I'll review that again in this video, and then I will show you my improved version, uh, which is even faster. For me, it's all about getting in, setting up quickly, and at the end of the show, breaking down and getting out quickly. Um, and with my setup, I can do that. So without further ado, I'm gonna move the camera and I'm gonna show you uh, some of the things I'm talking about. Okay, so what we've got here is a QSC uh, K8.2 speaker. Um, all of the QSC speakers, at least in the K and K.2 series, have this handle right in the middle on top. So in a previous video, um, I showed this neat little contraption I made with a essentially a sawed off piece of uh, speaker stand that I wasn't using anymore, and this clip right here. This is called a Python clip. It's made by Nine, <clears throat> excuse me, it's made by Nine Dot Solutions. Um, and this is what is known as grip gear. And earlier in the video when I said I work in a production world, um, anybody who works with photography or videography probably knows what the word grip means. Um, and grips are the guys that set up the lights and set up <clears throat> all the flashing and the cardboards and the reflectors and the soft boxes. Um, and they use all sorts of fancy clamps to connect things to other things. So usually stuff that's made for the photography and the videography industry is robust as heck, sturdy as heck. Um, and this is definitely the case with this nine dot solutions gear. So all I've really done is taken a pole. This is a 35 millimeter pole clamp that is connected to um, this Python clamp. I put it in here. I tighten this down. And the torque that you could get on that is just incredible. So now I've got 
a very securely fastened, essentially, speaker stand on top of a speaker that's on a speaker stand. And the reason I was doing that is because I have been using these American DJ uh, Dots Par um, cans without the uh, lens on it that makes it a 20 degree light and without that lens this is a 60 degree light so it's a very wide wash that I can put out over my dance floor and of course these are constr uh, controlled through my DMX controller so this is the way I've been doing it in the past but to me this seemed a little clunky and something dawned on me and I thought this would be a little bit of an upgrade so let me take this light off I'm going to take this clamp off. Now, <clears throat> any of you that have QSC speakers, and I'm sure several other brands of speakers, have noticed these little black stickers on top. They're actually made out of metal, and they're nearly impossible to get off without a lot of persuasion. Um, so, for that persuasion, I use the littlest, tiniest flathead screwdriver I could find and try and get under it. Uh, pro tip, do not try this with your fingernail. You will break your fingernail off. I've done it. So, now that we have the... Wow, those things are sticky. Now that we have our fly points exposed, which these are M10 threads. Now, I'm not sure other brands of speakers use M10, uh, QSC does. So that's a metric 10 thread on both of these fly points. Okay. So what I'm about to show you, some of you who are in the industry uh, may be like, whoa, what are you doing? So I recently got today in the mail some new parts. These are called 5 8 inch baby studs. Okay. And I'll show you what those look like out of the package. And these are called um, TVMP, which stands for Television Motion Picture Yoke Adapters. And I'll show you what these look like. This is just a stud for attaching a variety of different fixtures to in the production world. Okay, this one is made out of aluminum, ultra sturdy. And then these yoke adapters or receivers, as some people call them. are usually made out of stainless steel and are quite heavy duty. So what you have is you have the stud goes into the receiver, this clamps it down, and then you have a solid connection. So most things in the grip world use a 3 8 inch thread. A 3 8 inch thread and an M10 thread are very, very close. They're about 0.019 millimeters apart. So less, uh, almost two tenths of a millimeter difference. You can screw a 3 8 thread into an M10 bolt. You cannot put an M10 thread into a 3 8 bolt. But you can do it the other way around. So... And it screws in and it doesn't feel wobbly. And there it is. I just mounted a stud on top of the speaker. Okay. So now what I'm going to show you is that same light fixture that I just showed you a minute ago with that TVMP yoke on it. Okay. Now, um, just a point here, if any of you are going to run out and buy one of these and try this for yourselves, Make sure you have a good drill and a good half inch sharp drill bit because almost every hole on every DJ lighting fixture is a 3 8 hole. Okay. The bolt on these yokes is a pretty heavy duty bolt. That's a half inch bolt. So you will need to drill out any 3 8 hole on your bracket. A little bit wider to a half an inch hole. So there you have it. I just mounted 
that light on top of there. And if I was so inclined, I don't know where I put that. Oh, let me take another one out of the package. I suppose I could have two of those on each speaker and mount the other light up here like this. I suppose I could do that. If I had four of these, maybe I would do that, but I only have two. Um, so, that is my little upgrade on my way to get something on top of a speaker that I thought was just a little less clunky than this. Um, and when you're done, you just spread these back and there you have it. Your speaker's back to normal. So I think I'm going to try that at my next, um, my next event using these. Um, oh, I just thought of another possible application for this. I think some of you may like this since YouTube is all the rage and everybody's into making video logs and I just made my first one of those a couple of weeks ago. Another potential application for this. Camera mount. Put your GoPro up here. You could film all of your events. And there you have it. Um, I don't know what some of you may think about the look of that. I'm not so sure. I like the look of that. But um, but I will, uh, if you guys make a couple of comments that you want to see links to all of this gear, like this camera mount, these studs, these this uh, TVMP yoke. You know, if I was thinking, I would have bought a black one of these instead of silver for over here. But um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope maybe I spurred some new ideas for somebody. And as always, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. So the magic of video editing has allowed me to take that other light into my workshop and put a half inch drill on a drill press just so you can see how it would look with two lights mounted on top of a speaker and no, I think that looks pretty cool. I think one of the things I find um, most interesting about this setup is for some reason, this is nearly perfectly balanced. I mean, that's, I'm really surprised that's not tipping more forward than that. Interesting. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you again. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully it gave you some tips that you can use to um, add some more effects to your system without adding a lot of bulk. Um, and also, I'm just, I would like to ask you, if you liked this video, please click the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, and please leave a comment. Then YouTube knows um, that you found this content valuable um, and it will be more apt to show it to other viewers like you. Um, also, if you leave a comment, it's going to allow me to respond to your comments as well as I'd certainly love to hear some future videos you'd like me to do. I think the next one I'm going to do is an update on a video I did a couple of years ago called Wedding DJ Survival Kit. That by far got, I think, the most views of any of my videos on my channel. Um, it's been a couple of years since I did that video. I'm going to do an update to that probably later this week. So if you like that or if you want to see that, please hit subscribe, hit that bell, and, um, and then you'll be notified when the new video is posted. Thanks a lot, guys. Until next time, I'll see you soon.